Sesi Global Challenge. This is one of the most interesting game that will ever come across. Besides being an interesting game, it is also a very challenging one. And uh, when you make a mistake, you can easily go from making a huge profit to making a very huge loss uh, in one round. Therefore, it's something that uh, you need to be very careful when making this decision and make sure that you follow all the instruction and information that you are given. So in this video today, we are going to tackle Sesim round one. And I strongly believe that after watching this video, you'll have a very good background on how to make this decision in such a way that you'll be able to maximize your profit and win this game from round one to the final round that will be undertaking this Sesim Global Challenge. Before we start, kindly consider subscribing to our channel so that next time we have similar video, YouTube will let you know. First thing first, uh, when you do Sesim Global Challenge, uh, in round one, consider checking the market outlook. This is a very important information because it's going to show you how the demand is going to shift in the current round that you are doing your assessing. For example, in this round, we are being told that uh, the demand in all regions is expected to increase by at least 5%. Uh, there's also a disclaimer saying that uh, there are indications of growth decline in Europe and to a lesser extent in the USA. China's market sales is smaller than the other two regions. Uh, therefore, while making this decision, despite the fact that um, the market is expected to grow, you need to be very careful with the Europe because it is expected to decline as, and also uh, in USA, a decline is also expected too. Uh, it also says that um, in China, the market is smaller compared to other region. Uh, therefore, make sure you take that note, especially while estimating the demand. Another important thing in the market outlook is the cost. In this case, we are being told that um, uh, with the availability, okay, in the USA, industry is concerned with the availability of the workforce for basic operation. This will hit some of our outsourcing partner heavily, especially those that are in low cost. Uh, this inform information is very important, especially for long-term planning, because um, it touch uh, about um, outsourcing, but indirectly is telling you that um, you need to put your in-house production in order so that um, in case uh, such problem occur in future, you'll have already had that uh, problem. In short, it's saying that you need to build your in-house production early now to avoid these challenges. Another thing uh, we are being told that the interest rate is likely to increase from 2.6. That is the basic interest rate charged by the Federal Reserve Bank from 2.6 percent uh, sorry, from 2.4% to 2.6%. Therefore, this is important, especially while deciding the type of financing that you are going to consider for your business. Um, usually, if an, the interest rate increases, uh, loan financing or um, debt, debt financing is going to be quite expensive because you are being charged a higher interest than what was there before. Having gathered uh, this information about uh, how the market is going to change and all other factors such as um, financing and um, cost of production, it's now the time for you to do the demand estimates. Okay, uh, from the information you are given, uh, we are told that uh, USA, China, and Europe, uh, it is predicted that the market is going to grow by at least percent, five percent in each region. And that is the reason why we have 5% uh, predicted market growth for all three regions. Okay, another important thing are these graphs on the right of the screen. This represent refueling network coverage. Um, in all um, three regions, you can see hybrid and uh, combustion car are well developed. And therefore, these are some of the markets that we need to capture very early in this game. However, something like uh, 
electric and hydrogen car are still very low especially in usa and uh, europe however in china we can see the electric car refueling network is uh, very well developed uh, and uh, currently in round one is serving a, a percentage of at least 20% uh, that is a very good number and um, early development can utilize this opportunity especially in china and start offering electric car in that region as that of uh, round four the market uh, for electric cars in china is going to be very huge and uh, any company that will have already started offering uh, their product and uh, their electric product in china will really do well in this market okay having that information let's now do the demand estimates uh, we are only offering combustion car in our region and um, since in the previous round uh, we had a uh, 20% uh, market market share will maintain the same despite the fact that the market is expected to grow by at least 5% on all this region and the reason for this is because uh, we do not want to be over optimistic and end up uh, risking having a very huge inventory because you see inventory stores money and uh, that money could be used somewhere else maybe to improve um, our R&D or improve our capacity and that is the reason why we are being conservatives in R&D uh, we have considered uh, offering or improving our features in-house uh, we are not using um, others technology therefore we are not buying any licenses now however from round two we will consider being buying the licenses uh, for us to have uh, these features uh, within one year because if we consider only developing the features in-house it requires at least one round for it to be completed based on that or based on our decision we have considered uh, offering two two hundred thousand of person days for our combustion and this will really help us to increase our features by one however for hybrid we have um, offered uh, one million person days and that um, is likely to bring us about uh, addition one one more uh, additional uh, feature for our hybrid cars and that's all for R&D. We can go to marketing. In USA, in the previous round, uh, we offered uh, or three features were offered for a combustion car product. And uh, the selling price uh, that we have considered um, currently is 19,500. However, we have also increased the number of features that we are offering from three. Now we are offering six features and uh, our product marketing strategy is brand previous uh, round was balanced but now we have changed uh, to brand you can see our demand estimate we have increased just a little bit in the previous round uh, we sold uh, 719 units and now we have estimated to sell 755 units uh, the total unit cost of production is about uh, 17,949.5 uh, therefore this uh, leaves us uh, about uh, uh, two thousand dollars per product um, in the gross uh, margin as you can see uh, in previous round we had a profit of about uh, 2.5 million but currently based on the decision that we have made so far we are estimating at this point to have a profit of at least uh, 3.8 million uh, because there there has not been a very big difference from what we produced in the previous round and now um, the personnel that are needed we have not changed quite uh, much and that's why we are maintaining at uh, 5,000 we have also not changed the wages but uh, we have increased the training budget from 500 to 700 because uh, we want to improve our productivity index when it comes to hr our company is really, really doing very well because uh, you can see the personal personnel turnover percentage last round uh, when we compare our own and market average are nearly the same similarly to r d personnel efficiency last round compared to 
comparing all our own and market average, uh, they are both nearly the same. For training priorities, uh, we have ensured that uh, we are offering basic training, work safety training, non-discrimination policy training, ethical and anti-corruption training, personnel, health and safety training. Uh, these training runs very, are very important because um, they will ensure that they improve the efficiency of our workers and also will ensure that um, we are avoid uh, other vices such as corruption in our production systems. We are also ensuring our companies are adhering to labor policies such as labor regulation and employee rights adherence, company employees and union relations management position quotas, ETC. And that's why we have already, we have checked all of these uh, boxes to ensure our company is compliant. This is very important because uh, it's going to help our company to avoid things like strikes and also ensure that our employees are well, are well represented and then because of this, um, we are going to improve their morale and improve their productivity. And uh, logistic, uh, what you have done, we have um, ensured that uh, we meet demand first in a uh, region where we have uh, production facilities before we meet demand elsewhere. And that's why you can see from USA, we are meeting first the demand in USA. And then secondly, we are meeting in Europe and finally in China. The reason that uh, we are having Europe in second option uh, in both cases is because Europe doesn't have production facility. Therefore, after meeting the needs or the market requirement of regions where we have facility, the next um, priority we are going to meet uh, the demand in the region that doesn't have facility. Before finally meeting uh, demand in those regions that have facilities but uh, do not provide produce enough to satisfy their own demand. In production, uh, specifically under planning, um, we can see that uh, we do not have uh, unsatisfied demand. And the reason for that is because uh, we have maximized our capacity allocation uh, for production to 100 in USA and uh, 100 in China. We do not have any other product and that's why we are producing or allocating the entire production to our combustion uh, uh, cars. And uh, we are also uh, having a, a positive ending inventory. And the important thing about this is because um, when you have a positive value here, we will avoiding the problem of stocking out because we do not want to stock out. If we stock out, that means I uh, will not be satisfying uh, the needs of our customers. And that is the reason why we are producing more than uh, what we estimated to sell because uh, clearly we do not know how the market will turn out. If the market will turn out to be in our favor and to sell more than what we projected, then we'll have that surplus to meet that demand. Uh, when we go to sustainability, uh, we are ensuring that at least 30% of our uh, energy utilization are renewable, both in our USA and China facilities. We are also uh, using contract manufacturing because in-house production is not yet enough to meet all our demand. And that's the reason why we are using contract manufacturing amounting to about uh, 250K in USA and 400K in China. We also need to make investment, especially uh, because uh, we are estimating to start uh, selling our hybrid cars from round three. And that's why we are uh, offering or we are buying some capacity for hybrid cars amounting to 2,600. Finally, finance. Uh, because in USA, we are having a very huge uh, long-term debt of about uh, 15.9 billion. Uh, we are moving some money from China to USA to try and help us uh, hedge this problem. We are moving about uh, 6 million in internal loan from uh, China to USA. We are not moving any money from Europe to USA or Europe to other region uh, because um, the amount remaining in Europe is quite small and uh, 
it might be needed to meet the cash needs of this region currently. Uh, now uh, we are also taking a loan of about uh, 4 million and this will really help us to balance our financial needs especially in our main company organization which is in USA. The reason also why we are not taking so much money in China is because uh, we are developing a production facility that will be need to, needed to produce our hybrid cars and this facility will be located in China. We also uh, bought back some stock amounting to about uh, 2 million and the reason for this was because uh, we wanted to make our stock to be less diluted and uh, with the expectation that it will really help us to improve our stock price. Again, uh, that's all for finance and also all for this round as uh, a same round one. In case you have any question, kindly consider commenting below and we'll get back to you. In case you need help uh, completing SSE, you can also contact us via the WhatsApp link provided on the video description or you can email us. Again, thank you for taking the time to watch our video. Hope it, it was really helpful. Also, kindly consider subscribing to our channel uh, so that uh, we, in case you have a similar video to this one, YouTube is going to let you know. That's all. Have a nice time.